Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to the first official video of 2022. I hope everyone had a lovely holiday season and a lovely new year. Uh, today we're gonna do a 2022 version of small business tips. I have compiled 10 tips today that I think are important for this upcoming new year of people who are looking to continue growing their small business or start a small business for the first time. I'm going to be changing some things up in the new year uh, with videos and mostly that is to stick to that Friday schedule so you can expect a new video every single Friday and also to say the dreaded thing that I hate when people say which is if you like this content uh, like and subscribe I hate it this year is going to be full of art tutorials small business informational videos artistic videos anything in that genre so if you're interested in that like and subscribe. Three more pieces of information real quick before we get started. The first is that I am fighting off an illness right now so my brain's only working at about 75% capacity. I debated skipping this video today for that reason um, but you know I really wanted to start the new year off strong and get it out to you so if I say anything that doesn't make a lot of sense it's the sick brain talking. Um, just ignore it. Second of all, uh, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Toxic Final Co. and on Instagram at Abigail Faith Co. for uh, business and business related content. And the third thing that I want to mention before I leap into these tips and tricks is that these are not immediate fixes. It is really easy to watch videos like this and implement all of it and wonder why it's not creating some magical fix immediately the moment you start doing it, but it is still a very long process. Starting and running a small business takes a long time and a lot of energy and a lot of patience and a lot of self-kindness and compassion along the way, so hopefully these tips are helpful. Let's get started. I got my handy dandy list because I knew I would forget <laughs> what I wanted to say. Okay, so the first thing and maybe the most technical of all of the pieces is SEO. SEO is search engine optimization and it is basically how sites and people find your content or your information and so I do use Etsy for my small business so I will use Etsy as an example but we want to optimize um, our searches and how people are finding our content and what that means is that when I'm doing an Etsy listing, and again, you're gonna have a similar setup for whatever platform you're on, but when I'm doing an Etsy listing, and I get to put in the tags, which is sort of equivalent to hashtags on social media, you wanna put things that you know people are typing. So if you just put art, painting, blah, 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 you're gonna be with billions of other tags. If you put things that you might type into Etsy if you were searching for handmade goods, so for me, I think about typing unique Christmas gifts, or um, gifts for a music friend, or you know, vintage DIYs, or things that are just kind of a little less common, but still something someone would put into a search engine. Those are the kinds of tags you want to be putting on your video. And if these tags aren't working for you, and you, people aren't seeing your content, you can always change them. You can go in, you can update your listing, uh, especially around holidays, you want to go in, you fix up those listings, change them to be like Valentine's Day gift, or Easter decoration or whatever the thing is, that is something that you could put in your planner or on your to-do list to go in and fix up your tags depending on how they're working for you. Um, so that's sort of about as brief as I can get with search engine optimization, but it's basically the same idea as hashtags. And if you've watched videos about social media, you know that similarly on Instagram or something, you want to be using hashtags in the couple hundred thousand range as opposed to in the billion range because you're just going to get lost in a sea of people. And so the same thing is true uh, when people are searching up our artwork or whatever we're doing for um, a small business. Mine is artwork, so you'll hear me refer to it as artwork, but if you don't sell artwork, then that's totally okay. That's just the way I'm used to wording it. Number two is product photography, and I do think I have it on the schedule to make an entire video on product photography tips this year. Uh, please let me know what your exact questions are on product photography and I can be more clear. But one of the big mistakes that I see small business owners make, especially new small business owners or people that are wondering why their products aren't getting seen or purchased, is due to um, low quality photography. Uh, that can be anything from bad lighting to an image that is blurry to um, the setup of an image doesn't make sense. So if I put my head in this half of the screen 
and I did the whole video over here, you'd be like, I don't, under I don't understand. The same thing is true for your products, like don't put your products in this corner. Uh, of the frame and, and things like that. If you're looking to gain sales, um, one of the things that is so important is high quality uh, product photos and making sure that they really draw people in. It is a generally safe rule that product photos are very bright. Even if you're someone who's selling um, dark witchy items or something, you still want a lot of light in your pictures, you want very clear photos. If you have a professional camera or a camera that will blur the background, that always looks very professional. There are some ways you can do that on your iPhone, so again, let me know exactly what photography questions you have, and I can make a whole video on what you want to know. You can even tell me what you sell, and I'll make sure to include it in that video. I think a long time ago on TikTok, I did an example video of photographing um, stickers and an example video of photographing candles. Um, while I do art for my business, I am a photographer and it is something I do as a freelancer on the side, so even if it's not a product that I would sell or photograph, I can probably help you figure out what the best way to photograph it could be, even if you're working with lower level equipment. You know, you really don't need the fanciest equipment to run a business, and I know that that is sometimes a common misconception because there will be people that say, oh, you want the best pictures, get the fanciest camera, it's just not true. Um, you can do it with your iPhone, it just might take a little extra learning and a little extra time. So, think about your product photography, think about how it catches the eye. Okay, here's a topic I don't hear people talking about a lot, and that is your customer base. Um, this is related to the tip that is given, which is find your niche. And I, I kind of hate this tip because it makes you feel like you need to take everything you love and you need to like squish it down into one tiny little thing. And I'm realizing the longer I run a business that that's not true. Um, it is not about necessarily the niche that you do, but about the customer base you're trying to reach. So for example, I am mutual friends with um, a woman on social media who runs um, a small business and she sells a lot of handmade items but a variety of items. She sells like blankets and like bookmarks, masks, like all kinds of different things that are just in your sort of generic gifty items. But every single one of those items is geared towards babies or new mothers. And I think this is a really good way. If I had said to her, you need to niche down, that would mean get rid of bookmarks or get rid of blankets. Maybe you only sell bookmarks or you only sell blankets, like you focus in on one thing. But she doesn't have to focus in on one thing because her niche is marketing products to moms and young kids or gifts for mothers and young kids, the kind of gifts you bring to baby showers and things like that. That's her niche. But I think using the word niche to say that you need to do less or hone in is sometimes not helpful. Now that being said, if you are selling two totally random crazy items that don't match up or go together in any way shape or form it can be confusing to your customer base to your seo to the people following you online like it can be confusing so niche is something to think about but i don't want you to get boxed in with the word niche in the way that we traditionally do um and so with that being said i want you to think about your customer base i am an artist my customer base is pretty wide um, it's turning more recently into people who can afford larger, more expensive pieces of art, but it started as people who wanted to buy $20 painted records as cute gifts and decor for their home, and um, still, doing art is a fairly broad range of customer base. But I'll tell you what I have learned about my customer base, and that is when I try to niche down even further, like I did a Marvel series of art, I have done um, some video games like pieces that were recommended to me. People were like, these would sell awesome if you make this, this, and this. So I did, and you know what? They didn't sell because I'm not in that group of people. If I had had 20,000 followers of Marvel fans and I posted five Marvel pieces, they probably would have sold like that, but I don't. And while I'm sure there are Marvel fans in my community, it wasn't enough so to make a whole drop of those kinds of pieces and it's just something to think about. So everyone has their customer base and the things that their customers want. That's not to be confused with doing only what your customers want and not what you want. But make sure if you're starting a business or running a business that you understand who your customers are and who you're trying to target. And that's gonna help you make products and make content for marketing reasons and so on and so forth. 
Okay, so in the realm of marketing, number four is about marketing. Uh, basically, and again, we're going to use Etsy as an example because that's what I have. We talked about SEO. Those are the people who, um, using SEO, people are going to find you straight through the site. They're going to search on Etsy, they're going to find something, and they're going to find your product. I'm going to be honest with you guys, 96%, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, 96% of my views come from external sources. And I can find this in my statistics, which is really nice for me to know, but that means 4% of people are finding me through SEO. And you might say, oh, well, so your SEO must be awful. No. <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is that my following on TikTok, which I have been very, very blessed and very lucky to have, is where the majority of my views come from. Like, I think 86% of those external views come over straight from TikTok. And that's just because that's where I'm getting seen. And if I had no TikTok, 95% of my views could easily come from Etsy, but because I have TikTok and Instagram, quite a few of my views come over from those platforms. And this is just to say that the marketing piece is really important. I did have someone do at one of my videos recently talking about Etsy and why I like Etsy and why I've chosen Etsy, and they do edit it and they said, I agree with this, but you can't use Etsy and not do any marketing. And I was like, absolutely, you can't. Uh, I mean, you can, but you're not going to find the sales. You have to have marketing in, in other places. And the good news with uh, our current age of technology is that social media is a free marketing platform for us. It's very time consuming. You have to learn a lot about it. It can be very frustrating, but essentially it's free marketing on a platform where billions of people are every single day. And so that uh, TikTok and Instagram are what I use for marketing, mostly TikTok. And it's worked really well for me for the most part. Um, I have never bought uh, Etsy ads, I've never bought ads for other sites to go on Facebook or anything like that. I just do all of my marketing via posting on social media and that is perhaps a topic for a whole other video as it's not as simple as that comment makes it sound, but um, there has to be some component of marketing. So if you're starting an Etsy shop tomorrow, start a TikTok account for it, start an Instagram account for it or a Facebook account for it. Don't just post things on Etsy or on whatever platform you're on and expect to make all of the sales in the world. Um, it's just not quite that simple. And so that's just something I really want you guys to keep in mind. Uh, number five is pricing your work. Ugh, a commonly debated topic here. Um, I am a chronic underpricer. You know what I mean. I, I underprice my work and it's only recently that I've started really trying to price what it's worth um, and still it sort of makes my skin crawl to even think about. Um, but pricing is important when it comes to creating a customer base because your prices are too high, you know, you're not going to make sales right off the bat, your prices are too low, your items seem bad quality or not as good as something that is maybe a couple bucks more. And so you want to find a middle ground with your pricing. Let's say, for example, you're selling earrings. If you sell a pair of earrings for $4, there is something I think in our brands nowadays, and it may not be for everyone, but on my end, as I'm just going to use myself as a generic example customer, if I see a pair of earrings for $4, I think they're not good quality, they're probably going to hurt my ears, they might not be made well. I mean, we're, that's like, we're talking Walmart prices, right? <clears throat> Don't come for me, Walmart. Um, if I see a pair of earrings for $40, I think, oh, that's super high-end, it must be really high quality and made amazingly, but I can't afford it. Uh, maybe a thought process. If your customer base is high-end, then you're totally good on that side. Um, and then we have a happy middle ground. Um, $15, $20 for a pair of earrings puts us in a place where we're like, okay, that's reasonable and probably also fairly well-made. And so that's just... That's, that's my, my brain working at 75%. That's the best example I can come up for you. Or with you. That's the best example I can come with. Next. Number six is a tip that um, I feel like when I hear it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is to utilize social media. I already covered this a little bit, but um, what I want to say about social media specifically is that I think the key to not necessarily success as in your followers and views, but the key to your long-term success as a business owner on social media 
is to use the social media you like using as a customer, I guess, as a viewer, and make the kinds of videos that you like making. And as someone who has burned myself out trying to make the content that I think everyone else wants, I can say with confidence that your long-term use of social media as a marketing tool for a business uh, relies entirely on your enjoyment and interest in it. And there are all these rules I could spew at you about how much you should post and yada yada yada. If you're interested in the tips and tricks on TikTok video, I have one of those from over a year ago now, I think, so um, it's probably fairly up to date, but you can check that out if you want. Uh, basically, my biggest piece of advice is to make sure you're doing something you enjoy. If you spend most of your time on Instagram, consider using Instagram as your platform. If you spend most of your time on TikTok, consider using TikTok or Facebook or so on and so forth. And also, if you really like watching a certain kind of video, like you really like art videos but you don't like watching talking videos, um, then make the kinds of videos that you like making or like watching. Uh, it's going to sort of make it easier for you to continue doing it long term and it is easy to burn out via social media. I find for me personally it's the first sign of some kind of burnout or lack of interest in my work is when I feel like I am pushing to create things that I'm just not passionate about and so uh, that's an important aspect and something I want you guys to keep in mind. Alright, number seven is, um, I don't know if it even counts as a tip, but you need to consider the platform that you're selling on, whether this is Etsy, Shopify, a website directly through Instagram, which I think has a sell feature now, or whatever. Whatever your platform is, um, just take a little bit of time to do some market research and figure out uh, what the best platform is for your kind of work. And I only say that because, well, Etsy has been a really amazing platform for my vinyl record art because Etsy is known for handmade goods and artistic things. So I fit really well into that. The farther that I go into oil paintings, fine art, and custom commissions, the more I'm tempted to get a website just because um, I think it's less common that someone drops $1,000 on a painting via Etsy. And uh, while I have not done the switch to a website yet, if I continue into sort of the um, gallery style fine art work, I am, you know, just considering whether or not Etsy is the right platform for that kind of work or whether I can pair Etsy with a website because you can use multiple platforms. We talk a lot about, you know, what the best platform is, but you can have your stuff on multiple places and sell through multiple platforms if you want, so that's something to consider as well. Um, if you are not selling some sort of handmade good, Etsy is not always the best platform. There are uh, other places that might do better, and I think that a quick Google search can help you really figure out uh, what the statistics are for the kinds of things that sell on your different platforms, so it's something to think about. Number eight is diversifying your income. I do have a fairly recent video on my multiple streams of income if you're, inter in if you're interested in that. Um, and I will say that I think uh, as a small business owner, it is definitely useful for us to have multiple streams of income because business, while it can be amazing, can also be incredibly inconsistent. And when you see all these videos posted right before the new year, which I made one of as well, that's like January, February, March, and it's going through the months of the year, and people are posting how much they made, the one thing that goes through all of that, even if someone made $10,000 or more a month, is that it changes so much. It's so inconsistent, and that is just sort of the blessing and the curse of small business in some ways. Um, and so having multiple streams of income, and that's not saying like you have to go out and get some job you hate, but um, there is a lot of things you can do that are big projects and might take time. Switching from active income streams to passive income streams, there's Patreon, there's Skillshare classes, there is um, monetizing on a YouTube channel or being on a creator fund on social media, there are sponsorships or brand deals, there are things all over the place. and. I understand and want to recognize that all of those things can be very overwhelming 
I'm not suggesting you go out and do every single one of those things, but one of my business goals and resolutions for the new year was to start to explore where other streams of income might be to add to that, and that way there's just a little bit more consistency in the amount of income I can expect to make. So it's something I want you guys to think about. I will also say in relation to that one before I move on that that is probably not a place to start. If you're starting your business this year, you aren't going to be looking at brand deals just yet. If you have been in business for a little while and you're looking to branch out a bit, that's mostly who I'm referring to here. But know that if you are starting a business for the first time, these are income options for your future. Um, but you may not want to leap into all those projects right away. It can be kind of overwhelming and a lot of work and you want to get yourself kind of established first, in my opinion. You're welcome to argue me in the comments. All right, <laughs> number nine is to make goals. Sounds like a weird tip, um, but if we don't know what we want and we don't know where we're going, it's hard to get there. Just, it's more of a mindset thing. It's a little bit of a manifestation thing. It's okay if that's not your thing, but having a piece of paper, writing down some goals. My goals in my business since I started in May of 2020 have varied widely. I tried making really overly ambitious goals. Uh, it didn't really work for me. It made me overwhelmed. And so then I switched to setting really, really basic goals. These goals can be anything from, I want 100,000 followers this year, to I just want to wake up today and work on one piece for me. I mean, we're talking anything. You need to know yourself, your needs. It's so important as a small business owner that you take care of yourself and follow your boundaries and your needs. And if that means that all you do in a day is do a piece for you and you don't post about it and you don't sell it, whatever, like, you know, um, not every single thing you do with every single day has to make you money. Less remember that. Um, but thinking about and establishing what some of your business goals might be short term and long term can be helpful in us having that long term motivation and drive to succeed at our businesses. And number 10, um, I sort of touched on in the last one, is your enjoyment is the most important thing. If you start your business and you are not enjoying what you are doing, either maybe small business isn't for you and that's okay, or Maybe you're selling the wrong kind of product. And I am a perfect example of this. People love the vinyl records. That's what I started by selling upcycled vinyl records. And I'll continue doing them because I have a huge customer base that likes the vinyl records. But once I discovered oil painting and started doing large custom commissions of portraits and pet portraits, I just fell so in love with that. If you told me that I had to wake up every day for a whole week and paint nothing but records, I'd be like, why? <laughs> and that's not to say that they're not fun and I don't enjoy them, but it's not really where my passion is anymore and it sort of was in the beginning. So you're allowed to change your mind, go with the flow, you know, change things up. Um, you have to do it in a way that is sort of smart, if I am to say. I've been, you know, I didn't all of a sudden stop posting records and start posting other art and just like never post a record again. I tried to like sort of introduce my audience on social media to it kind of slowly and, and weave it in until I could establish myself that way. So I've, I've tried to be careful about the way that I change up what I'm doing, but your enjoyment in what you are doing is the most important thing. I think one of the absolute joys of being a small business owner and the reason so many of us do it is because we're looking for a job that we love or looking for something that we want to do. And so if you start a business and you find that the thing that you're doing specifically is not what you want to do, look for something else. Um, again, that could be in any way, shape or form, products, schedule, locations, I mean, whatever. You're allowed to move around within the world. You don't have to feel trapped in one thing. And I just really want you guys to remember that because I have been through my ups and downs with business, with burnout, with mental health issues and having to take time off due to my pushing myself to do things that I just wasn't really feeling at the time and not allowing myself to take breaks. And so when I say your enjoyment, I don't just mean the products you make, I mean your health and well-being is a business. I mean, your products are your business, but you run the business. So if you're going to be a business owner, you have to come first and your needs, your physical and mental needs, your interest, your joy, your love, it all has to come first. Um, so I wanted to end on that one <laughs> as I think it's a really important one and I can't really stress it enough. Okay, 
So that has been 10 tips or things to think about for your small business. Let me know if there's any really important ones you think I missed. Let me know what other kinds of videos you want to see. Um, I love interacting with you guys in the comments, so feel free to leave your opinions. If you disagree with anything I said, that's totally fine. Let me know. I'm really curious to see. Um, at the end of the day, we can watch videos of people giving advice all day long, but I am not you. I'm not living your life, and I'm not running your business. So if you have an experience that um, contradicts something I said, that's okay. I'm not saying that I am right 100% of the time, but I am trying to speak to the audience of people who um, has a little bit less experience and is looking to really sort of grow into this kind of career. Um, once again, if you like this kind of content, a mixture of art, social media, small business, um, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be posting, hopefully, fingers crossed, every Friday this year and you can expect to see videos then. Let me know what kind of videos you might be interested in and I can add them to the plan. Uh, you can find my products and art on social media, uh, TikTok at Toxic Vinyl Co, Instagram at Toxic Vinyl Co, and you can find more small business and personal content on Abigail Faith Co on Instagram. This has been your ending spiel. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found these helpful and I will see you guys next Friday. Have a lovely week.